Configuring a PC properly is the difference between your buyer asking you all sorts of questions like how do I run this program? How do I install that? Where do I find this piece of software? Versus them not asking you anything at all and them just being perfectly happy with their purchase. It's worth spending the extra time on. If you don't already know, my name is Zach and I'm a PC builder and over the last several of years of selling all of my builds to people after making YouTube videos, I've pretty much perfected what it takes to fully configure the PCs for your customers so they're good to go. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Everything that we're talking about today is right up here, but before we get into the nitty gritty, let's make sure everything else is good to go before we actually start the configuration process. We already have other videos that can help you with the other steps such as stress testing your PC, safely packaging, and other videos like that. This specific video is purely how to configure the build after it's fully installed. And when I say fully installed, I'm talking about Windows, and as of late 2022, it's honestly not a bad idea to just install Windows 11 Home on every single one of your PC builds. Now, now that Windows 11 is more stable and doesn't have those typical launch date issues that we were dealing with anymore, it's becoming the default option for most people. And we aren't going to explain how to properly install Windows in a video like this because A, I think most PC builders already know how to do that, but B, just in case if you don't, there's tons of guides and resources on the internet for you to use. In a nutshell, all you're doing is loading the Windows 11 media creation tool on a USB drive, booting from the USB drive, and clicking through the menus and you'll eventually be good to go. Alright, so now that the Windows operating system is installed, let's start installing some software on your computer. That way your customer is ready to go right off the bat. And I'll personally show you what's on my list of what I put on my builds. First up, I would highly recommend going to nightnight.com. And if you haven't heard of this before, you're absolutely going to love it. From here, you can select from all the most popular pieces of software. And then once you've selected them, you just click get your night night. This will give you a single file to run that will automatically install every piece of software all in one go. It'll auto default to selecting no for any extra software they're trying to add and basically just give you the safest installation method possible. Now, the only software that I personally recommend from here is Google Chrome and Steam. You could certainly make a case for some others like Firefox, VLC, 7-Zip, and maybe a few others, but we like to keep things as minimal as possible. And the reason we go with Chrome and Steam is so that the customer doesn't have to use the browser everyone hates, Edge of course, and also so they are one step closer to playing games with Steam. Remember that people that are usually buying pre-built gaming PCs don't actually know how gaming PCs work just yet. So just installing Steam and fully updating it for them may actually save them a lot of time. And for real, who doesn't have a gaming PC that doesn't have Steam installed? Now, one thing to mention is that Steam will always have a first time update pending. So go ahead and actually open Steam for the first time. That way the big update is taken care of for your customer as well. And now that the software is installed, the other thing you want to put on there is any utilities and drivers that you think are necessary. You'll definitely want to pre-install your GPU driver because remember, beginner PC gamers might not actually know how to do that. And you'll also want to get any motherboard utilities that you think you'll need for tuning or definitely to control any RGB products. For downloading the drivers, it's super simple. Just go to NVIDIA or AMD's website, find the graphics card that you're looking for, and download and install. I usually just like to install the minimal driver and installation, by the way, instead of the full suite like NVIDIA's GeForce Experience, but you can't go wrong either way. For utilities, here it'll all depend on the build itself. I wouldn't go super overboard on this one and get everything possible because you don't want beginner PC buyers tuning things that aren't necessary, but at a minimum, you definitely want to install any required RGB software so they have full control over their aesthetic. If you're utilizing RGB products that are plugged into your motherboard, you'll most likely be good with your motherboard's default RGB software like Gigabyte's RGB Fusion or MSI Mystic Lite. Just make sure that you yourself have full control over the RGBs, that way you know your customer will as well. And now that everything is installed, you definitely want to give the PC a reboot, but before it actually boots up into Windows, now's a good time to hop into the BIOS of your motherboard and enable XMP on the RAM if you haven't already. We explained in the stress testing video that it's a good idea to make sure your XMP settings are good to go, but yeah, if you're advertising that the RAM in your build is clocked at 3200 megahertz, then you should absolutely tune it to 3200 megahertz and make sure it's stable before selling. And while we're in the BIOS, I would also recommend updating that BIOS version to the latest possible because that'll usually include some stability or maybe even performance tweaks that you want to take advantage of. Again, there's tons of resources on the internet to help you out with that. Moving on, it's now time to do a couple of Windows tweaks to make sure that your customer has the best first impression possible on your build. First, I would open up Task Manager and disable any unnecessary startup app applications so the PC feels snappier right from the start. I always disable things like OneDrive, Steam, Cortana, or any of the other nonsense that most customers just aren't going to need. After that, I would adjust the time zone and make sure the clock settings are good to go, and then I would activate Windows, but that's up to you. And if you want my opinion on that, I would personally recommend activating Windows on every single one of your PC builds no matter how much it costs. Some people may disagree with that though, but remember, the number one goal in all this is to give the best first impression and buying experience possible, that way your customers recommend 
to their friends to buy from you again. And then after Windows is activated, I would go ahead and fully update Windows, give it another reboot, check for updates again. And once you get that green check mark saying it's fully updated, you're good to go. And finally, once all of the software is installed, the tweaks are made or whatever other steps that you think are necessary are complete, the last thing I would really recommend doing is to write some sort of a quick start guide to get your beginner PC gamers up and running as soon as possible. There's so many ways that you could execute on this. You can make it as simple as dropping a quick start notepad file on the desktop, or you could print out a nice branded paper guide like we have here. Here you'll be able to supply your customers with as much information as possible, depending on how far you want to take it. But at a minimum, I would at least explain to them how to control RGBs if they're in your build and also explain where to properly plug in your monitors. For RGBs, most beginners aren't going to understand the concept that it may require one, two, three, or maybe even four different pieces of software to control the various RGB products in your build. So quickly explain which software controls what just to make it super streamlined for them. If it's a switch in the back of the case buried under a rat's nest of cables, guide them on where exactly that is. And for the monitors, you would be surprised at how many people go to plug in that display port cable or the HDMI cable into the motherboard instead of the dedicated graphics card. I'm not kidding when I say I used to see that up to 30% of the time. So it's 100% worth it right now to document that for them. That way you don't have to waste time answering those questions. You can also utilize a do not use sticker like we do on the motherboard's HDMI port, which also helps a ton. And finally for the quick start guide, I also like to include a handwritten note just to personalize the transaction a bit. I'll usually write just something really quick about my build or thanking them for being a customer. Doing little personal touches like this really add up to a true five-star buying experience. And that's exactly how you can establish a good brand and reputation on a marketplace like Jawa. And finally, the very last step I would do may sound silly to you experienced PC builders, but I absolutely recommend shipping the PC with the power supply switch turned on. Most people switch this off for whatever reason, but I can't tell you how many times a customer has come back to me saying that they can't boot their PC up. And it's really just because the power supply switch was turned off. Again, this would be great to explain in your quick start guide as well. But either way, I would recommend turning that on to make things as easy as possible for them. Hopefully all these steps help you configure your next gaming PC sale. And remember, the entire goal of all of this is just to give the best possible buying experience for your customer. That way they recommend to your friends to buy from you again. And it's also a great idea to do all this simply to minimize the amount of questions you get asked when selling. It's a win-win for literally everyone. And just like usual, if you have any more questions on how to properly configure your gaming PC for a sale, feel free to join us over in the Jawa Discord server. I'll see you in there.